So uh, today, we'll, we will get concavity covered. We might not get to the second derivative test. And besides, the second derivative test, honestly, is kind of dumb. Yeah, yeah, it is pretty dumb. Given the option, you're not going to ever use the second derivative test. The only time you're going to use the second derivative test is if the problem specifically says, use the second derivative test to blah, 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 blah. That doesn't happen very often. However, it happens often enough that I can't not teach it to you. So we'll do this first. We'll talk about concavity. Uh, we'll talk about points of inflection. We'll do the second derivative test at some point, probably not today. And then ideally, I realize how why this doesn't work because I learned fourth period that this is genetic. I would like to say you should be able to roll your tongue, but if it's not genetically, it's not genetic. no, not not brr, like uh, the youth like that. Oh, I can't do it either. Do they have an extra muscle in their tongue. Yeah, that. I can't either. Those two pictures illustrate concavity. Concavity has to do with the shape of the graph. So we've talked already about increasing and decreasing. Increasing and decreasing, however, has nothing to do with the shape of the graph. It can look like a, a lot of different ways and still be increasing and decreasing. Concavity gets a little bit more specific with the curve of the graph. So the one on the left is what's called concave up. Looks like a U. The one on the right is also concave up. What's the difference between the two? What's increasing, one's decreasing. Dan, which is which? On the left, we have concave up and, and increasing. And on the right? Good, here, take this. Go up to the board and draw me two examples of concave down decreasing and concave down increasing. Concave down. That's concave up. That's concave up? Yes, sir. Beautiful. What is that? Decreasing. Concave down, decreasing. Very good. Now, what does concave up, decreasing look like? Concave up. Is that like a double negative? Up, decreasing? Well, it doesn't. <laughs> you got it. It's just the opposite. No, that's increasing. That is concave down, but that. Oh, no, you're right. Sorry. Yeah, good. yeah, that's concave down increasing. Well done. Let's give it up for Dave. Let's get rid of the one that didn't mean anything. Okay, you got it? Now, some people like to use the idea that concave up will hold water if it were a container. Concave down won't hold water. That doesn't make any sense to me, but... It does. Uh, a lot of people have used that, and I've seen that in other sources. Um, I think it's kind of dumb, but if it works for you, great. Use it. Woohoo! Any problems? All right. That's concavity. It would be nice if it was that easy, but it's not. Because we got some math speak to talk about. Okay. Don't read this yet. I just want to ask you a simple question. Let's suppose. I have a function, g of x. This is a little bit of review. How would I determine where g of x is increasing and decreasing? Give me. You would find the derivative of g of x. Uh -huh. Put it to zero to find the number. Beautiful. And then you can draw a number line and label it g of the other derivative. Um, and then on the number, you, on the number line, you put your critical numbers, and then you can plug in other numbers like on the graph to figure out whether it's changing from positive to negative or negative to positive. Any problems with that? No. Let's keep it up. Suppose I have k of x. Would anything about what she just explained change? Well, no. Other than, yeah, you'd label it differently. Now we've got k prime of x. Take the derivative, set the derivative equal to 0. Find the critical numbers, put them on number line test regions. Okay, we're good, right? 
Now, suppose instead of g of x or k of x, I have this function that just happens to be called f prime. How would I figure out where f prime is increasing? Second derivative. Beautiful. And then do a second derivative test. Not second derivative test. Don't get ahead of your skis here. Yeah. Take the derivative, set it equal to zero, solve for critical numbers, put them on a number line. This to me seems a little confusing. Now I have to involve the second derivative to figure out where f prime is increasing. But the point being, it doesn't matter what the function is. Smiley face of x. You would take the derivative of smiley face to get smiley face prime of x, set it equal to zero, solve for the critical numbers, put them on a number line, test the regions. Okay. I don't like this as much as I like this. Right? Let me get there. That. That to me makes more sense. It's going to be concave up when the second derivative is positive. It's going to be concave down when the second derivative is negative. Am I right in my assumption that that's easier? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, good. And we're going to use that to solve all these problems. The nice thing about this is that it follows the exact same procedure we did yesterday. It just involves the second derivative. And one small change that I'll show you in a second. We're still doing the same thing. We're finding a derivative, we're finding the critical numbers, we're putting them on a number line and testing regions. Okay, so we'll do this. Notice the problem isn't asking anything about increasing or decreasing. It's not asking you anything about extrema. It's not asking you anything about maxes and mins, in case you forgot what extrema means. It's just asking you where is this thing concave up or concave down. So what do we need? Second derivative. My clicker works better when it's turned on. There we go. Okay, second derivative. Nice, easy polynomial. Should be able to fire off the second derivative of this bad boy. There's the first derivative. Now, I could go and find the critical number, 7 equals 0 to all that other gun, but I don't care because I just want the second derivative. Got a nice little critical number at negative 1 third. Okay. Then we need a second derivative number line. Yesterday we had the first derivative number line. I made a big deal about labeling it as a first derivative number line, just like I'm going to make a big deal about labeling this as a second derivative number line. Because eventually you're going to have problems that have both of them. And it also tells you where I'm going to plug numbers into. That's a pretty common mistake. People plug numbers into the wrong spot, the wrong function. Okay, I'm not going back to the original function. I'm not plugging in the first derivative. I'm plugging into the second derivative. Since there's only one critical number, that's pretty easy to put on a number line. It's hard to screw that one up. What number would you like to choose to the left of negative one third? Negative, negative one. Negative one. If I put negative one into the second derivative, is it positive or negative? negative. It's negative. What number to the right works? Zero. zero. If I put zero in, it's positive or negative? Positive. So unlike the first derivative, this is the um, the biggest change here. We're not going to use arrows anymore. We use C, D, and C, U. Concave down, concave up. Because like we saw in a previous slide, if the second derivative is negative, it's concave down. If the second derivative is positive, it's concave up. I just looked up and there's a girl coming down the hallway with blood all over her face. So I just want to make sure she's okay. Why are you clapping? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. 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 Okay.
You're a hero. You saved her. I didn't save her. I just wanted to make sure she was okay. Just a bloody yeah. nose. Yeah. I didn't know if she was going to crawl or something. You would have helped her. Nah, as long as it doesn't happen in here, I'm okay. Just whatever happens out there, I'm good to go. Okay. Okay, so we got that, right? Hey, Cash. What does that look like? So we got we got a point negative one third. I know coming into that point is concave down. Coming out of that point is concave up. Can you sketch what that looks like up there? I have a quick question. Certainly. How again did you figure out um, that it was concave down and concave up? Because if it's negative, it's concave down. If it's positive, it's concave up. Like starting from the left side? Correct. Okay. Something like that? Okay, so let's see. Step to the side so everybody can see. Get my own. This is concave down. Yeah. until it hits about there, then it switches to concave up, until it gets about there, then it's concave down. So if we do this, uh, now you're good. So you see why? This is concave down, then it switches to concave up. Okay, good. Thank you. Go up, clap, please. Any other possibilities? Can I draw a different picture where it's concave down on the left side, but concave up on the right side? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's down. I've been so here, done that. And then opposite of that is. Okay, so it's concave down on the left, concave up on the right. Yeah. Yes? Good. Thank you. Stick it up there. Any others? No? That's it? You know that's not it, right? Yes. I wouldn't ask the question. You got another idea? I think so. Oh. We should all just wave at him later and see if you were. <laughs> nice. Concave down on the left, concave up on the right. Any others? Uh. All right. Any others? No. That's it. Yeah. Do um. Do like a sign graph. Cool. Yes, but it would keep changing back and forth. For our particular like, example. Like a certain yeah. And you can see where this could be a piece of a sign graph, right? Yeah. Okay. What's wrong with that point there and there? <coughs> it's non-differentiable, right? We have a corner there. So you get an idea of what's happening here. These points have special names, which we'll get to later. Those are the points where it changes from being concave up to concave down or concave down to concave up. Okay. Try that one on your own. Now we're going to ramp it up a little bit because that derivative is not as easy. Big decision time. How are you going to do it? Either one of those. Quotient rule or chain rule?
First derivative not bad, yes? Yeah. Second derivative, a little nastier, still doable. We getting there? It's great. What's zero times anything? Zero. That goes away, so what do you got on the numerator? Uh, no, 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 that's like the only part. First one, first one I got. And then in two X. Well, that's what they do. Do I find the second one? I thought I had This is a Yeah, it's a Okay, so I uh, decided to do it as a chain rule. I know that walking around it looked like a lot of people did. Quotient rule, which is fine. We'll get the same answers. So there's the first derivative. Are we good to go with that? Yes. Beautiful. Second derivative, in this case, would be easier as, I think it would be easier as a quotient rule, which I did, which is kind of nasty. So let's, let's kill a number of birds with one stone here. Grading your test, by the way, they're almost done. One page left. But you remember the problem where you had to simplify the function. Oh, yeah. Right? A lot of come on mans on that problem. The reason being is that you violated some simple math ideas. See the 2x over on the end? Mm -hmm. on the, sorry, the, on the right side of the numerator. See that 2x as an example? Yeah. Can I just move that to the denominator? No. Why not? You just can't. A ton of you took something out of the numerator and just moved it to the denominator because it had a negative exponent. You can't do that because there's a minus sign in there. So let me uh, simplify it. We get that. We work it all out. Now, how did that get to that step? And that's the other thing that many of you did. I could multiply out that entire numerator. But that's not the approach you want to get in the habit of using. What you want to use is a GCF. Factor out the common denominator from, sorry, not the common denominator, common uh, factor from each of those terms. Okay, so I would take out an x squared plus 3, and I would take out a negative 12. And then simplify everything. And when you simplify it, you get it down to that stuff. Okay. Now, Second derivative test, we want to know where that thing equals zero or where it's undefined. In order to make it equal to zero, we want the numerator to be equal to zero. What makes that numerator equal to zero? And? Negative one and one. What makes the denominator zero? Why? Very good. We're dealing with real numbers here. So we don't care about the denominator in this case because nothing makes that denominator equal to zero. The other thing to notice about the denominator, can that denominator ever be negative? No. Why not? It's raised to the third power. But it's the x squared. Good. Yeah. Okay, it's the x squared plus three. That's also worth remembering as we work through the rest of the problem. Okay, critical numbers at negative one and one. And remember, these are critical numbers for the second derivative. Therefore, we can slap those on a number line. I included this in here because you might see that in the book and or you might see it in some of the uh, answers in the back of the book. I hate the chart method. I like the number line method. Slap negative one and one on a number line and test regions. Put in negative 10, for instance. If I go back to the function, if I put negative 10 in there, I'm going to get 100 minus 1. The top is positive, the bottom is positive, positive over positive, positive. Put in 0. 
That's going to be negative. So the top is negative. The bottom is positive. Negative over a positive is negative. And then I put in a big honking number like a gabillion. A gabillion squared minus 1 is still positive. Positive over positive equals positive, which is why we get that number line. Positive, negative, positive. Just like the first derivative test, don't get in the habit of thinking that once you test the first region, it flips back and forth. It does appear that every example that I've done so far does that, but that won't always be the case. John, what do you got? When you plug it in, I think I, I see it now, but you plug it in the second derivative. Correct. And again, that's why I put that F double prime on the end. That tells you where to plug in. Okay. Any problems? We talked already about what happens at 1 and negative 1. Mm -hmm. Alex drew a bunch of pictures for us. Makes a transition from concave up to concave down or from concave down to concave up. Those points have a special name. They're called points of inflection or POIs. There's the, oh no wait, there's the definition. Now you can read that, you can write it down, you can do whatever you want, but let's back up. What's a point of inflection? In English. Say again? Um, no, that would be a max and a min. Where it changes from the increase of the degrees. Hate pronouns. Where, what's it and what's changing? Uh, graph. Line of the graph. Graph of the line. It's changing from increasing. And at the point, it's like the term where it goes in decreasing. No, that's a max or a min. Give me. Could you say it's the point on the graph where the second derivative changes from either positive to negative? Yeah. Okay. It's where the second derivative changes from positive to negative or negative to positive. It's where the graph changes from concave up to concave down or from concave down to concave up, which can all be read from that little number line there. Notice now, looking at that, I have a point of inflection at negative 1. And I have a point of inflection at 1 because it's changing. Concave up, concave down, concave down, concave up. Did you have a question or are you just stretching? Oh, I, no, I did have a question. Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Okay. So again, well, there's two examples of it. And we, we've seen those already with the pictures that we've drawn. There's the fancy definition. Don't really care. Now we have an example. That's not a cubic. What's that called? A quadric. No. Quartic. 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 Correct. Anybody know what a quartic looks like? It's a W. Or. Why is or it yeah, or the golden arches. Right. Possibilities. Okay, so I'd like to know. Do I have any points of inflection? If so, where are they? And what's the concavity of this graph look like? Do that, please. Nice, easy graph. You don't get, have to get bogged down in the derivatives now. They're pretty straightforward. Yeah. 
All right, points of inflection, where are they? Zero and two. Zero and two. Are we sure they're points of inflection, though? Did you test regions? Yes. Or did you just get critical numbers and assume, yeah, they're points of inflection? No, test them. Yeah, I just got <laughs> I thought as much. Okay, second derivative factor that out, zero and two. I agree that those are critical numbers, but you have to test them. You will see functions where it goes concave down, concave down, concave up, or concave down across the whole thing. That's going to be the interesting thing is when we start looking at those kind of functions, seeing if you can come up with a graph that will satisfy those weird conditions. Like what's going to generate a, a critical number where the concavity won't change? That'll be fun. This one, however, is straightforward. So one. Question. So <coughs> to differentiate two oh, maximums and then uh, points of inflection, so maximums are only for time, and then this is for the second question. Thank you. Oh my God, what is that? So that's kind. Of, that is a quartic, but it's kind of a W. It's just got a, a saggy W, if you want. It's an old W. Oh yeah. It's an old W. Old W, is that what it was? <laughs> nice. Yeah. Okay. See how it is. The number line is what is going to verify that it is changing from concave up to concave down, concave down to concave up. So we do have two points of inflection there. Okay. Any problems with anything we've covered so far before we start doing this? Because this is going to get really confusing. Why? Give us Did you say why? Oh, you'll see. Okay, so we're okay with the concept of points of inflection. We're okay with the concept of concavity. All right, so the second derivative test does exactly what the first derivative test does. So my question would be, what does the first derivative test do? Good, it verifies maxes and mins. The second derivative test does the same thing. So the question that you'll ask yourself is self, why do I want to bother taking a second derivative to do something that I can do after I've just taken the first derivative? Because that's more work, right? I mean, I have to take the first derivative to get the second derivative, so I'm already there. Why not just use the first derivative and be done with it? That's a great question, one of which I don't have the answer for. Other than you will see problems where it will say using the second derivative test to verify that blah, blah, blah are extrema. Points of inflection and concavity have nothing to do with the second derivative test. The only thing the second derivative test does is maxes and mins. Are you with me so far? Okay, I'm hesitant to move on because it might confuse you. What, what time are we out of here? 26. 26. We got time. Let's try it. This will be good. Okay. Uh, no, before you read that, let me let me show you some questions or draw you some pictures or show you some questions or draw some draw some answers. Draw some questions. Yeah, draw some questions. Here's a function. Concave up or concave down? Concave down. Concave down. Max or min? It's a max. It's a max. Correct. Okay. Is it possible? To draw a function that is a, that has a max that's also concave up. No. What is this backpack? Anybody want a cough drop? Did that come out of your pocket? No, it was on the ground. Nice <laughs> You think I just randomly do some cough yeah. drops? <laughs> Stuff just flies out of my pocket. <laughs> it's still wrapped. It's expired. It's expired. It's a cough <laughs> drop. It's not milk. <laughs> what is this? Unwrap it, lick it, and put it back. Oh, that's gross. That's a trap. What kind of sick individual would do something like that? Bachi? Yeah. yeah. I wasn't surprised when I found that. Bachi. <laughs> Great. What, did, what was my question? Uh, is it possible to have a concave up with a max? It's the max. Most well with max. You're for the most part you're correct. It's not possible. There is an exception to the rule. 
you could do something silly like this. Okay, but what's wrong with that point? It's non-differentiable, right? So we'll exclude that, okay. and you'll see why in a second. So the concept for second derivative test is pretty straightforward. If I have a point that's either a max or a min, and I don't know which one, if I can determine if it's concave up or concave down, it should tell me whether it's a max or a min. So what's going on here? Concave up or concave down? Concave up, max or min? Min. So again, I would go through the same process. Is it possible to have a, a minimum with concave down? The answer would be no, unless you do that stupid thing that way. I didn't know, just forget about that. So I just want to talk about those normally. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. If it's an extrema, either a max or a min, and it's concave down, it has to be a max. It's the top of the hill. Yeah. If it's an extrema and it's concave up, it's got to be a min, which is the bottom of the valley. Does that make sense? Yes? Okay, then you've got the second derivative test under control. So all we need to do for this, I shouldn't say all we need to do, what we need to do for the second derivative test is find the critical numbers from the first derivative and then determine whether or not it's concave up or concave down, which involves a second derivative, which in my opinion is way too much work, but we should still talk about it. You'll notice in the first sentence there, it says let f be a function such that f prime of c equals zero. On that weird picture that I drew, f prime of c wouldn't equal zero, it would be undefined. So that point would still be a critical number from the first derivative, but it doesn't satisfy this. So this little bit here eliminates that funky picture that I drew and keeps us to the same idea, that if it's concave down and a critical number, it's gotta be a max. If it's concave up in a critical number, it's got to be a min. Here's the other thing that I don't like about the second derivative test. It doesn't always work. What if it equals zero? Mm -hmm. Screws everything up. Then you have to go back to the first derivative test again. So again, why not just do the first derivative test? And the answer is you're going to 85% of the time. Did you cheat? No. Good job. She had to. Do you know how quick she answered? No. no. Why? No. Well, why would you ask that question? Well, me, for the she didn't to drop the cough drop, drop so that you wouldn't go in there and check. It's okay, I got it. Hey, you drop it. <laughs> How's that working out for you? My head's been a little hot. <laughs> Have a good trip. You haven't coughed from one since you had that. All right, here we go. So wait, before we dive into this, let's, let's talk about if we were going to take the easy way. The easy way is we take the first derivative, find the critical numbers, put them on number line, test. You go increasing, then decreasing, or decreasing, then increasing. We've got our extrema. We know where max and mins are. We write some things, and then we're going to go. This is different. You're going to have to take the first derivative. Find some critical numbers. Take the second derivative. Test if those critical numbers are positive or negative. We don't need the critical numbers for the second derivative. We just need to know positive or negative. Okay, so I'm gonna. So <laughs> Garrett, come back. Bobby, you good? Grab your phone. All right. Poggy. Did grab his phone, Poggy? What he said. His name is Augie. Augie. Like doggy without the D. <laughs> yeah, it's not O G G I E. It's not the D. A U G I Y. O G Y. He was originally named Doggy, but the both the, him and the dog would come crawling, so they changed his name to Augie. His dad used to call How do you spell it? A U A U G I E. Could be. He's named after the emperor. What nationality? You don't have to tell me about this. Here, remember the first day of class, and I go around and ask you what name you want to be called and what your nationality is, and are you named after the dog? No, it's just what name you want to be called. He wants to be called Augie, so I wrote down Augie. I could probably look up what his real name is because I have. It's probably August. It probably is. Yeah. Yeah. Probably Augustus. <laughs> or it could be it could be William. 
<laughs> Could be like William Augustus. John Michael. August. And he goes by Augie. <laughs> or his name is like Odell. 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 That's his first I'm not getting the connection. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me guess. It's probably another. Uh, yeah, you should not. No, no, it's not. It's, it's not. not. Okay. That's the first like oh name that came. Oh no. Oh no, it's not. <laughs> no one is named Oh no. Right. Oh right. Oh Oh, 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 my God, they lost control. Oh, God, whoa. 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 Yeah, so we found some critical numbers. Well, all I did is click, but those are the critical numbers. And now the second derivative test requires that I find the second derivative. <laughs> that was easy. Doesn't require a number line. I just need to test. If x is negative 1, is the second derivative positive or negative? It's positive. It's positive. Positive. If x is negative 1, we know that it's a critical number from the first derivative. And we know that the second derivative is positive, which is concave up or concave down? Concave up. So we have a critical number with a function that's concave up, max or min? It's a min. What about 0? If x is 0, what's the second derivative? Positive. Zero. Zero. Um, Oops, second derivative doesn't work. That was a great plan. What if x is one? Negative. Negative. Concave down with a critical number, max or min? Yeah. Max. Okay. What's the point? I, again, I'm not defending it. I'm just telling you how it works. But you could put two in the worst part about the second derivative test is that like the first derivative test, well, the worst thing is it's not practical. The second worst thing is it also requires a sentence. And a sentence looks like that. <laughs> What is that sentence doing? It's establishing if it's a max or a min. It's telling you where it happens, and it's telling you why it happens. And the reason it happens is because f prime of negative 1 equals 0. That means it's a critical number. f double prime of negative 1 is greater than 0 means it's concave up. Can we actually use the at sign? Certainly. You can even... If you're feeling saucy, you could abbreviate relative as R-E-L. Right. Just don't do uh, B-U or B-E-C-U-Z. Can you just do one C? Can you just like C? C like forward slash oh. C? Or just B-C? Yeah. B-C? Sure. Yeah? Yeah. 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 And then abbreviate zero with like a dot. Sure. Sure. And then abbreviate and with the uh, the answer. Uh, yeah. The uh, just yeah. three and the two lines. Or you can do the yeah. The, or the amp is it called an ampersand? What's that? Is that what it's called? The the and symbol is the ampersand, right? Yeah. I don't know English. <laughs> I'll speak the English. C. Okay. Yeah. All right. We talked about that already. It doesn't work. Now, what happens if it doesn't work? You got to go back to the first derivative test. <laughs> no, dog. Uh, God, why are we doing this? I don't even like school. God, I hate this class. 
Are these stupid kids that sit next to me? So ugly. <laughs> oh! Come, come, come. So oh! 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 Why am I ooing? Four ups in a row. Yeah, two ups. Watch out. Didn't sound right, but we'll go with it. Two ups in a row. Ooh. No, no ooh on that. Nothing <laughs> exciting happening there. Con gave up, con gave down, con gave up, con gave down. That's the second round. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, but the two ups. That's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 A couple of ups. A couple of ups. Steal that one. A couple of ups. Eventually, what we're going to be able to do is take all this information, and then when we're done with this gum, Put together a very accurate picture of what this thing looks like without the calculator. And there's like homework in graph. Good strategy. Mm -hmm. I understand. It's nothing anybody's ever going to ask people to do. Just throw them into the right. How do you want to do that? Graph. It's not like at McDonald's. They're going to be like. I'd like a quarter pound of cheese, a large fry, Diet Coke, and graph X cubed minus four. <laughs> right? <laughs> you're you're going to be like, just pull up and wait. Just pull up and wait. Pull up and wait. Just pull up and wait. Sorry, we can't graph right now. We're all out of graphs. Come up to the first window, please. That'll be 1375. Oh, wait, you weren't graphing. Our graphing machine's broken. That's only 495. Cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know how much a yeah. it takes? Yeah. Well, so cash. And then yeah. you need to be quiet. Don't say anything good. Just let it fall. Yeah. So we cash it out one yeah. side. Yeah. 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 What? I was about to ask where did you get that, but that would be a tough question from Mongolia. What are they what are they doing in Mongolia? Not like it's not like flowing through. Okay. I know, but what are so Mongolian Look up, uh, look up what the uh, currency of Mongolia is, please. I mean, I well, I got four countries. Oh, yeah, he's been recording all the time. I don't know what's it called. It's not a word. It's not a word. It's not a word. What? 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 Do you speak Mongolian? I do. Could you read this name? This word, please? Say it, make it speak. Make it speak. Yeah. What are you going to do with the No, I just want to press the You can't. No! 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 Starts clicking back at you. Goodbye! That was completely unproductive. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 the graph like this. Yeah. It's kind of like a downward. Correct. Because it's it's curved. It, think of it like a U. So if the U is upside down, it's concave down. If the U is upside, right side up, it's concave. But what if it's like this? Okay. So that.